<laughs> Alright, so what we have here today is a database, a simple database backup script. Um, so I'm just going to run it through, show you how it works, and what changes you can make. So it's basically strictly from the command line, right? So you enter the command PHP, name of the file is to be backup.php, dash D, and the database we're going to backup. So you have a list here of test stuff and things I play with. I'm just going to backup charts builder. So you just press enter, and you can see start a backup, saving the charts, saving the users, writing file. And then backup complete. If you if you go to the location, you'll see where the backup is, and then we could edit this and see what is inside the file itself. All right, so you can see our table has been backed up. We have trap if table exists, etc. All right, so the file actually starts from here, where we say if it's not running from CLI, exit program. Right, so you can check that code out. So this is where we confirm that we're only running this from the command line. And we use flags get arguments, which is supposed to get the arguments that we pass in. So, like in the example, we passed in dash d, right? So that's what we do in there. So we get in all the flags that we passed into the command line. And let's look at that function actually. All right, so it's using the get opt function, and we have the short options. And I guess this is all the flags that you can pass in, or at least it will look for. So we look for D, T, L, S, I'll explain what these does and then it returns the arguments, alright? So, yeah. So once I get the flags, uh, what we do next is we check to make sure they have values. So for example, for database, we check to see if we pass it in a database and then we have flags called T, which is for tables. So that is where you could select the specific tables that you want to back up from the database. We also have backup location, so you could choose where the file will be saved and then we have backup limit, which I can't remember what this is, this is for. All right, so backup limit says how many files you want to keep uh, in in the folder. So let's say you want to keep a backup. Let's say every if you're just doing a backup every day and you want to want to keep file files in the folder, it will on the fifth backup it would rewrite the first file. At least that's how it should work. And I can't remember what we just call it, but yeah. So that's what backup limit is for. All right, and we just try, and then if we get a message with echo, and then we call the function backup by tables. All right, so let's look at this function. So show you some globals, the backup location, the tables, stuff like that. And this is where we have the backup limit. So old files check. So if it's greater than a certain number, we'd remove the old files. So we can look at that function. Well, let's do it now. Let's look at old files. Now, to be honest, I don't know how tested this is, but it does work. Uh, we're still using new directory iterator. We're going through the files. We're looking for the files of a certain type, so db dash database, and we take in the first file. All right. Then we count in how many files it have, and what we would do next is remove the first file. That's basically all we do. And we're just removing the first file every time we call this. If the limit is over, if the limit is over the backup, so backup limit. So if it's over five files, if the limit was five, then we'll remove the first file. So that's what our remove all file does. I believe the default for this is zero. All right, and then we continue. And so we get the connection. This is pretty straightforward. Again, you can edit this. Uh, right now we yeah no this is fine. So we get the connection, and then we say if all tables, what that's supposed to mean. All right, so if all tables, and then we call a query here. Alright, so if we did not specify what tables we want, uh, what we do is we just query from your schema to get the name of the tables based on the database, right? So that's what this query does here. Otherwise, if we, we if we specify the tables, we can just explode it and we have to separate the tables by a comma, so we'll explode it and we'll have an array of tables, right? So either or, right? So it can function either way, it's dependent. So if you choose the T option, uh, let's let's test it out. So in my charts bullet database, we have two tables, charts and users, right? So I'm just going to specify charts when I'm doing the backup. So before I did a full backup, and now I'm just going to specify charts, all right? So dash T, and we just want charts. So just confirm that the name of it. C-A-R-T-S. All right, so it's saving charts. All right, so let's look at the file. So this is the detailed file here. And we just look at it and it should have only saved charts, right? Well, the one before was doing charts and users because those are the two tables. This one just doing charts. So once you have the tables, you look through the tables and then you do your query to get the information. This is not necessary in my code, but it works perfectly. Um, so you notice two things. Query, right? So we get in everything from the table. 
and then the output is what we output into the files all right so we have drop if table exists drop table if exists right so that's this drop if drop table if exists so we output that and then we have show create table so that is the thing to create the table the query to create a table all right so that's how we output that there you can see that where's the output somewhere right so if we have it we could output it and then we go through the rows remember we query all the information and we do instead insert statements all right insert into the table name where we get the table name from and then values and we have an add slashes thing which works fine and print replace we have a comment here and all of this works fine i have never um, actually tried to figure out if it works perfectly which is a good thing so i should try um let's try to put it back into a, a, a database so i'm going to drop my charts table i'm going to drop the table and that table should have been dropped now and now let's see if you could restore it because i now realize i haven't really tested the restore capability of it if it doesn't work it would be very awkward right column doesn't match all right let's see if it worked insert tables chats builder one second all right sorry about that always good to double check that things work as it's supposed to so this was a crucial error and was giving me duplicate data if i could show you an example which is what the reason wasn't working in chat builder we see we have this so i had to fix that right so so it was saying row column um column count doesn't match value right so that's the problem i was having so i fixed that by setting pdo fetch associative um i think that is all that's required to make it work as expected because the original code doesn't use this low level kind of query all right so all right continuing so the example i was doing was where i i don't know if i could clear this uh and the example i was doing is where i was um doing one table all right so i am going to do that now okay great i just want to try right. so we're going to do the the database we're going to use is test and we're just going to do for categories all right so i choose table and we say categories categories all right so you should just back up the categories table and we can go here and we can confirm that that happened the back the tables has been backed up and now what we can do is i actually lost my um test data for chas builder which is fine i don't use that um so what we could do now or maybe we could back it up just in case so let's um let's export it so we don't lose this categories since I'm gonna test it now, I'll be more careful. Um, so in documents, categories, CSV. Uh, sure, why not? Hopefully that's not something important, right? All right, so we just backed it up and now so many categories. Alright, all right so now we're just going to drop this table yep and then we can refresh to see that it has gone and now what we want to do is use the information that we just backed up using the script to create the table again i believe we dropped the table yeah so the table itself doesn't exist so we should bring it back to life and as you can see we're going through the scripts we can refresh the page refresh the Oh, did I not put it in the correct card? Right, let's try that again. Um, categories. Let's run that again. I don't think I selected the database. What kind of thing is going wrong? All right, so categories. And there we have, so our categories is back up, right? So we could confirm that the script itself works as expected. No, if it wasn't working before. All right, as right, so you could run through this. But basically, we get any data and we put it in a format where we could use to to re to back up the database, right? Put it like this: values and preg replaces for special things like this, right? 
which I'd love, love to test, but I can't because I no longer have this information, which is unfortunate. All right, cool. So what you do next, once you finish with this, so this is all the table, the data from the uh, table. What we do now is we we use the backup location and we create a database named DB, the, file, the name of the database and a timestamp. So that's what we have here. And then we name it SQL and then we write the file and then we create the file and then the backup is complete. So that's our script. It's actually, it's really simple. It's not very complicated. Um, let's try to back up one with multiple databases where we see like the table, I mean multiple tables. So this time we're going to, let's try for another database. Let's try for, let's say wheels for events. Do I have anything in this blacklist? Um, categories and messages. All right. That's great. So what we're going to do is we're going to create the categories and messages. Um, we're going to back us up for word free events. All right. So that's just the name of a database. So words for events, I believe it's called. And we're going to back up two tables, messages and categories. So we just have to separate it by a comma messages and i think that should do it so start and back up saving categories saving messages and then when we go to the location we should be able to see it all right so yeah so that that works as expected great i'm going to try for another database i'm going to see if i can back this up i want to test the add slashes thing so what we're going to select is our wf tutorials database WF tutorials, which is just a sample database, and we're going to select a table. We're going to call that table. Um, what is the name of the table? Code snippets, right? Code snippets. And what should happen is, is it here? Is the time right? So this should be it, and we should see our add slashes working. So what we could do now is we could try to see if we could, um, because you see it has some. It's a code simple database, so it has some weird information inside of it. So let's see if we can get this to to if we could um put this back into the database. So of course I need to I'm gonna save my information because I don't wanna make that mistake again. So I'm gonna export it and we're gonna save it as code snippets.csv. That's correct. And then we just go next. So they will do that. And what I'm going to do now, actually, I'm not even going to do that. I'm going to leave that alone because I might want that. I'm going to create a test data. I'm going to go into the test um, database and we're going to back it up. All right. So, well, I mean, we're going to restore it. So I'm going to copy that information from it. I'm going to paste it here and see if it works. It'd be great if it works because we're going to do this in the test database. All right. So it seems to be working fine. Let's just reload the page and go into our tables. We should now have a database called code snippet and that should have all the information that we had before. All right? So yeah, our script works as expected. You could check it out on the website. I'll have it up there um, and you could go through it and critique it. You could change these things. All right. So this is a default database. So for example, um, if you didn't select anything, it would just do WF tutorials, the whole will back up. Oh, there's one more thing I want to show you, which is um, how many files we have. We have two files. So if you want to change, so let's one, two, three, four, let's do test, right? So let's say if you want a little this test, I believe the limit is S or something like that. So we back up limit. Let's say you want to back up limit to be three. One, two, three, four. Let's just say four. So that you can see that um what it should do is remove the file. So it remove this guy here. One six one nine eight nine five zero six three. Alright, and it should have created a new one. So if you can look at the timestamps. Uh so the next one to remove is two five four. So let's see if we can run it again and if it will remove. Alright. 254 like the time is 261 right so let's see if that one was removed 261 so 261 gets removed which was that in time 254 and a new one gets created here all right so that's our 
So if you keep doing that, it will only keep like four or five. It will only keep four within the folder. All right. Again, it, that part, I don't think you want to test that part properly to make sure it works as expected because you don't want to delete things that are not supposed to delete. All right. But this is our database backup script. All right.